The following broadcast is brought to you by the friends and partners of Revival Ministries International. Take your Bibles and go with me to John chapter 2. And the whole theme of this morning is along the lines of the gift of faith, which I was so glad when Eduardo was talking because that's really what's coming upon people, the gift of faith to do extraordinary things, to go to places, to end up with property that comes into your hand where there's the favor of God, and God opened doors for you that would normally take other people 20, 30 years to do, you'll do it in three. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Now, John chapter two, here's what, when I woke up this morning, the Lord said to me, tell the people to go to, my, to the word, obviously to, to my word, but go to the word that I've spoken to them. You see, what is the word of the Lord that God has spoken to you? Not what he's spoken to somebody else. You can't run, you can run on this word, but God's speaking to everybody individually about specific things. And so if you can't, you know, somebody say, well, I don't really hear what God's saying right now. Go back to the last thing he told you to do and see if you're doing it. Are you with me? Why would God tell you something else when you're not doing what he last told you to do? Amen. How many have had the Lord speak to you about certain things in your life? Go to what he told you. And how many have received promises from God concerning your life? Stand upon those promises because they are personal. So look at this. The third day, there was a marriage in Cain of Galilee. There was a wedding and the mother of Jesus was there. Well, when your mother's there, she can sort everything out, you know. I miss my mother. She's gone on home to be with the Lord, you know. But I mean, moms can just get in the middle of everything. Jesus was also invited with his disciples to the wedding. And when the wine was all gone, the mother of Jesus said, they have no more wine. And Jesus said, dear woman, what is that to you and to me? What do we have in common? Leave it to me. My, my time, my hour to act has not yet come. And the mother said, the mother then obviously pushing him into a miracle. The first miracle says, whatever he says to you, do it. So I'm of a firm belief that you have to come back to the word of the Lord for your own personal life. I can, you know, you can tune in, you can listen to preachers. They'll say, you've got to do this, you've got to do this. That's all fine. There's many instructions from God's word that's for us in general. But what is God saying to you now? What is the Lord saying? What, what has God spoken to you over the last six months? Something that became real to you, that became a revelation to you, where it's the word of the Lord to you. That this is what God wants me to do. Whatever he says to you, do it. Because the enemy will always come with thoughts. Are you with me? And those thoughts, if you entertain them, become strongholds, and those strongholds paralyze you in fear and stop you from accomplishing. You say, well, I was going to accomplish it, but look at all what's going on. You know, oh, you put on the news, or even though some of you say you don't watch the news, but yet you hear the news, you know, it filters through, and it's always negativity, it's always failure. You know, America's going to go down, and we, we, the church is going to go down, but that's not what I hear. Are you with me? The last time I talked to the Lord, he never told me that, which was, you know, just before I walked out. He never said to me, uh, Rodney, it's going to be bad. The Lord never told me to come here and tell you to brace yourself. The devil better brace himself. Are you with me? We're not walking around here reactionary to what the enemy is doing. I remember years ago, I was flying into Los Angeles, landed there. To, I was going to do a meeting up in Agoura Hills. 
And the pastor picked me up and he was ashen, he was shaken, you know, he said, man, I just got sideswiped on the highway. And he said, I nearly got a head on collision. He said, we must, we're going to have a great service. God's really going to move because the devil's really mad. I thought, boy, if you, got, if you could have got killed, the whole of Los Angeles would be shaken. You know what I'm saying? So he was using the bad thing that happened to him as a barometer or a thermometer to the fact now that God's really going to move. If I've got to wake up in the morning to see how many bad things are going to happen to me through the day, to then decide, now, I'll tell you what, God's really going to move. You know, all my chickens died last night. <laughs> Come on, how many know what I'm talking about? How many know people talk along those lines? So they, they gauge what God's doing off of bad things that are happening. Bad things happen. You know, chickens die because a raccoon got in there and killed all your chickens. Are you with me? That's part of life. Raccoon was hungry. Had the family to feed. No, I know all you love raccoons because you watch the Disney movie and they all talk and they, they sing and it's a whole thing. And so you just love them. You know, aren't they so cute? No, they're not. They're savages. <laughs> I, tell you, I said to my wife yesterday, the day Disney let animals begin to speak is when everybody lost the plot. They did. Cats speak, cats sing. Everything. This is ridiculous. Although I did have a do dog that talked, I asked him, what's one minus one? He said, nothing. <laughs> anyway. All right. It's, it's, I know it's corny. I understand. I'm trying to get just a weak smile just from somebody. Here. So whatever he says to you, whatever he says to you, do it. So God's word to every person is the same, but his word as far as direction is different. It's the same word to everybody, but the direction is different because it's involving your assignment and what God's called you to do. There's no scripture in that you can open the Bible and says, um, buy the house and gives a street address. So you have to pray about that. There's no scripture that says, marry that lady. Hello. There's no scripture that says, get an airplane and go to America, to the land of the eagle. So there's the known will and there's the unknown will. As you apply the known will, then you have access to the unknown will, but it's going to come and the Lord will speak to you and God will direct you and tell you exactly what to do. And you'll feel the Lord either constrain you or release you. Don't sign that document. Don't go into business with that person. That person is, is, is a crook. I can tell you stories, you know, all day about situations that we found ourselves in right here and the Lord protected us because people came and misrepresented themselves. Are you with me? And I see through them quicker now than I used to. I had one guy walking here on, on the stand. He came and he said, I came here just for you. He was holding one of the big gulps. I, I was walking on the stand and I said, no, you didn't. You came here just for yourself. And he didn't even know what to do. But I knew he didn't come here for me. Oh, I came here to help you. I said, no, nope, you came here to help yourself, my friend. I got your number. I got you pegged a long time ago. Now, in the early days, I would have chosen my words, you know, I didn't want to offend or whatever. But we don't have time to sit and mess around. Are you with me? Now, don't pee down my neck and tell me it's raining. It's 
Oh, I've been enjoying the rain. That's not rain. <laughs> so say, <laughs> say this off to me. <laughs> say, whatever he says to me, I'm going to do. And so the Bible says here, there were six water pots of a stone standing there, as was Jewish custom of purification, ceremonial, ceremonial washing, demanded holding 20, 30 gallons apiece. And Jesus said, fill the water pots with water. So they filled them to the brim. And then he said, draw out some now and take it to the manager of the feast, to the one presiding, the superintendent of the banquet. So they took out some. And when the manager tasted the water, now turn wine, not knowing where it came from, though his servants who had drawn the water knew, he called the bridegroom and he said, Everyone else serves the best wine first, and when the people have drunk freely, then he serves that which is not good, but you kept back the good wine until now. Which I believe this obviously was the first miracle that Jesus do, did, sorry, and in verse 11 says, this, the first of his signs, miracles, and wonders, Jesus performed in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory. By, this, by it, he displayed his greatness and his power openly and his disciples believed in, adhered to, trusted and relied on him. This was not a miracle of salvation, a miracle of healing, a miracle of deliverance. It was really a miracle of provision and he showed forth his glory. I believe that this week shall be a week of the manifest glory of God in your life concerning provision for what you believe in God for. How many believe in God for? Big, big, big things. Then God will manifest his glory and provision will come in your hands supernaturally. And that there will be an acceleration. I mean, it's very embarrassing for the bridegroom to run. They have no wine. Thank God Mary was there and thank God she instigated it. And thank God Jesus was there. And she said these words, whatever. Whatever. Whatever he saith unto you, do. So I spend most of my days listening for whatever. Because I know that that's the key to unlock any breakthrough on a Monday, on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, on a Thursday, on a Friday. Can you say amen? Regardless of the circumstances that are coming against you, regardless of the winds of adversity that are blowing, are you with me? Whatever he says unto you, you do it. And that's where you have to come back to all the time because there are going to be many distractions that will come your way. Friends call, people call you out of the blue. I always know when I get on it, I'll receive three phone calls from people that are totally disconnected from me and they'll start bringing up nonsense, you know, and I think, oh yeah, I know what this is. This is just a distraction. It's a distraction. Well, I just thought I need to tell you how bad things really are. Well, let me tell you how good things actually are. Let, let, me, let me tell you what God says about this problem. You just listen to the one side, my friends. You have, you, have the bad, you have the bad news because you've been hanging around the wrong people. But I have the good news. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. 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 And we're going to finish our course. We're going to finish our race. Amen. We're going to accomplish everything that heaven has purposed in our life. Regardless of the circumstances. I remember when the Lord spoke to us to go to Madison Square Garden back in the last century. <laughs> in 99, we rented the garden for six weeks. And, you know, I don't know why the Lord always has me do something ridiculous. You know, it's like, can't I just be like a normal preacher? Go there for three nights. You know what I mean? Let's do a stand for two days. No, a hundred days. And we still, you know, we're still going. People call me, are you still doing that stand? I say, yeah. Well, how long is it going to go? I said, as long as other things are shut down, we have to stand for our brothers and sisters, you know. Yeah. So the, the Lord spoke to us, go to, I had a dream. And of course, the Lord said, go launch one of the biggest soul winning crusades since the 50s. 
And I didn't know what it was going to cost. In actual fact, we, at that time, people said, well, you need to bring these agencies around you. And they looked at our mailing list. We had about 300,000 people on a mailing list, you know, and they, they just looked and they said, look, we've, we've, we've checked your ministry out. You have no way to do this. Your ministry, you, you're, you're not on television at that time. We, we were on TV, but we didn't have a daily show or anything like that. And you don't have the partner base to pull this off. And they, they were coming out with everything, pulling it out of a, you know, like a magician's hat, you know. They, uh, they took a message of mine and they said, well, we'll write a partner letter for you and this is going to help generate the funds. And the letter was like, a, a dear, dear friend, as I was praying today, the Lord led me to go on this 40-day fast. And, and then day, day one was we're going to do this. This was the scripture, day two, day three. For 40 days, it was very elaborate. It was a huge. I mean, I've never seen myself write a letter that elaborate. It was amazing. And they had my signature on it, you know. And um, I looked at this and I said, what's this for? They said, no, this is going to help you raise funds. I said, we don't even do that. Our ministry doesn't operate that way. Well, how do you fund it? I said, God blesses us. The Lord, you know, speaks to people and, they, you know, ravens come and they bring in provision. And it's kind of supernatural the way things work out. And they said, well, if you don't do what we tell you, you're going to fail. But they turned right around and handed me the bill that they wanted me to pay them to help raise money was $750,000. This is a huge agency. I think they were out of Tulsa, Jerusalem, you know, a huge agency, and they were going to help raise these funds. I thought, you mean you helping yourself raise funds? You mean helping me? And the crazy thing, when they sat down, they had tears in their eyes. They heard about the vision. Oh, this is amazing. This is so amazing. Tears in their eyes. Lying dogs. Tears in their eyes. This is so the Lord, this is what America needs or whatever. And when I looked at the bill, I said, I'm not paying $750,000 for that. I haven't raised the dime. I'm already in debt $750,000 to you idiots. And I said, you've got me on a 40-day fast. I ain't fasting 40 days. Really, how can you just decide you're putting me on a fast? I'm going to eat steak. What are you talking about? Hey, they had me on a fast for 40 days. They said, well, if you don't do this, you'll not raise the money and your ministry is going to fail. And I looked at them and I said, well, you obviously don't know who I'm connected with then. That's good. Wow. Wow. You see, man didn't call me. God called me. And man didn't tell me to go to New York and rent Madison Square Garden. God spoke to me in a dream. So guess what? I'm going to go with his word above your word. Are you with me? I said, Lord, I know. In the natural, it looks impossible. I know there's people laughing at us. Who, who does he think he is? Well, there's, they, they always say that about me. Who does he think he is? Which I actually don't think I'm anything. People actually think you think that you're something when in actual fact, you're not thinking anything. Somebody said, that's not possible. It is possible. Men have the ability to not think anything. So when your wife says to you, what are you thinking? You say nothing. You're not lying. You're being truthful. <laughs> Men have the ability to absolutely be thinking about absolutely nothing. <laughs> Men have that place where there's nothing there. <laughs> A woman, now she does not have that ability to not be thinking something. She's always thinking something. Men can go to a place where you're on a screensaver. Like fish just going by on a tank. <laughs> she says, what are you thinking? Nothing. She has to tap the screen top in the coat and then you come back to that. You know what I'm saying? For a woman, it's pop-up screen. Pop, pop, pop the whole time. Just trying to help marriages here. <laughs> That's why sometimes it's confusing when you talk to your wife because you're not sure what screen is popping up at that moment. And you have to learn to deal with five open pages. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> Come on, how many know it's the truth? And the singles are going, yes, you don't even know anything. God's going to give you the husband or the wife that you're believing for, and you don't have to go to a strip club. <laughs> and just please, I'm warning you, farmersonly.com, stay away from it. So the word that I'd received in the natural was we were going to fail. I mean, they even talked to our board. I mean, I had people on my board at that time who thought we were going to fail. People even tried to tell us to cut it down to a week. I said, look, you don't understand. A week in New York or six weeks in New York, I still need a miracle. It, it don't really matter. You can't rent Madison Square Garden for, 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 for peanuts. You know, I'm kind of a person, if, if, if we're going to be in, we're going to be in. Did God say go? Yes. Then it doesn't really matter. God, tells, God told Noah to build an ark. Then why are you building a canoe? <laughs> are you with me? If you're going down, let it be the Titanic. You know what I mean? They can make a movie about you over a hundred years later. And everybody, uh-huh, na 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 Na, 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 na. <laughs> but if you go down in a canoe, who's going to make a movie about you a hundred years from now? <laughs> we went down in a rubber dinghy. If God says it, then do it. If God says it, then make the step in that direction and the miracle will happen as you go. As you go, as you walk in obedience, it'll begin to unfold for you. God's not gonna tell you something that's gonna destroy you. Are you with me? God's not gonna tell you something that's gonna lead you to your doom. God's not gonna direct you to, to your slaughter. God's gonna work away. He's gonna make a way where there is no way. And he's going to bring you through the opposition. Amen. There will be opposition because the enemy will always come against what God's saying. But great is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? So yes, that might be the word that's coming at me. But let me tell you, I have another word. And I'm going to go with the other word. Yes. I, I don't care what CNN says. I don't care what MSNBC says. I don't care what N NBC says, ABC or any of the C's. I don't care. I know what the word of the Lord says, and I know what God's word towards my life is, and towards this church. And I mean, I can get into the details of it, because, I mean, I, I can get into the details. Of it. I'll take a few minutes here. I mean, we're not in a hurry. I, I happen to know the pastor. Yeah, he and I get on well. But when we went to the garden and I found it was $200,000 a night for the empty building. I said, the guy wants this place for six weeks. He said, that's not possible. He said, people don't do that. I said, yes, they have. He said, what are you talking about? I said, Billy Graham had this place for three months. He said, I didn't know that. I said, there's a lot of things you don't know. He said, well, it's 200,000 a night. I said, that's for something that's selling tickets. We're not selling tickets. People are coming here for free. How can you charge me 200 grand a night for that? I said, go back in the back office, take your pencil, get a sharpener, and come back and tell me what my price is. So he, he came back. He said, um, I'll give it to you for 85,000 a night. I said, great. Shook hands, you know. 
And so he said, now the first deposit you're going to have to make on the 8th of January, which will be a million dollars, and the second deposit on the 30th of June, 99, because the meeting start on the 7th of July, and he said, you'll make the second million deposit on that day. So I said, fine. And we had in the account, which was, which was supernatural because we didn't, have, you know, we didn't have the money over and above our budget to run the ministry. I mean, you've got to get all this money over and above your budget. How are you going to do that? Well, when I made the announcement, a pastor said to me, I'm going to give you $100,000, which I couldn't believe that. I never heard a pastor say he would give me anything. So I thought this is like a real miracle. And then, so as I mentioned it three times, and he kept saying, why do you keep telling me you're going to go to New York? I already told you I'm going to give you $100,000. So I said, well, I was just checking, you know, when you've been in the ministry as long as I have at that time, I never had a pastor walk up, we're going to give you $100,000. They never give you anything. Anyway, that's what I found out, you know, just on the take, some of them, most of them, many of them, you know, I mean, it's just the way it is. And so I, then I was in South Africa and I shared, I said, we're going to go to New York, launch one of the biggest soul winning crusades since the fifties. And right after the service, a man walked up to me with a bag and I grabbed it and I held it. It was $70,000 worth of Krugerrands, Krug gold coins. And he said, this is for New York. Now this, I just announced it as a concept and I already had, you know, 170,000. That Sunday we got back. We received the tithe and offering like we're going to do today. And they told me there was another 30,000 came in over and above Mark for New York. So there's 200 grand, two weeks. Then I get a call from Australia and they said, we're going to sow 100,000. In three weeks, 300,000 came in and it wasn't even, it was just a concept. It was just, I made an announcement, but God began to speak to people. And so I had 200,000 in the account. I put that down as a deposit. He said, okay, we need the balance of 800,000 on the 8th of January. So on the 4th of January, which was the 4th of January, 1999 was a Monday. And, uh, you know, I had to go preach in West Palm Beach that night. There was a South African pastor that was starting a church and he had Jesse the Planners coming in and I don't know who all, who's who and, 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 and whatever. And, and I got the Monday night. Monday night was my slot, you know, which many times, not even really the greatest night, but you take what you get, you know. And so I went down there and he said, you know, we started in church and um, we had about 180 people there because they advertised and people came. We had a big following down in West Palm Beach. So Monday night, about 180 people, I got up and taught on the giving message. I received the offering and I preached that night and prayed for people. And he came to me after the service. He said, the offering tonight was 8,000. And he said, I want to give this towards, um, uh, you know, your meeting in New York. And I told my wife, I said, you know, uh, it was Monday. I said, you, you know, we've put the 200,000 down and we paid some other. We need another 505,000 between Monday and Thursday because I've got to get a bank guaranteed check to send the other 800,000 on to New York. And I didn't have it. How do you raise 505,000 on the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th of January? It's, a, it's virtually in the natural impossible. And I said to my wife, if the money's not here by Thursday, I'm canceling it because let me tell you, this is a dream from the Lord, not a nightmare. God said, go do it. And so then if God said, go do it, I must just be obedient to obey the voice of the Lord and move in that direction. So when he said to me, the offering was $8,000, he said, Pastor, I want to give this to you right now for, for New York. I said, sir, I said, 8,000, I said, that's not going to do it. I said, I need 505,000. So I said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to sow this 8,000 into your church. It's just opening. You're just starting. Let me bless you with that. He said, but you need the money. I said, I, I need 505. 8,000 will just irritate me. <laughs> because when God meets it, he meets it. He always comes through. You know, if you need 505,000, why is God going to give you 8,000? You go, oh, thank you. This is such a miracle. No, it's not. There's nothing miraculous about it. And of course, I've learned and taught over the years, if it's not enough to meet your need, it must be seen. That's why I turned around and flipped it. I turned around and flipped it immediately. Well, a man walked up to me, who's a partner with our ministry. He's gone home to be the Lord now. And he said, you know, because people will donate stocks to the ministry. 
And then we send it to him. He waits until the price is right. The price is right. And then he'll sell them and send the ministry the money. He said, Pastor, there was a couple from Jacksonville, and they had called um, the ministry. because I didn't know anything about that. I don't deal with that. Our staff was dealing with that. And they said they donated $5,000 worth of his stock. And then they called back and they changed it and said, look, we're going to give 100000 of the stock. And he said, I've been handling that for a couple of months. And he said, we sold it. And he said, yes, 75000 right now. And he said, we'll get the other twenty-five to you tomorrow. So it's Monday night now. Suddenly I'm going 505, 405. Oh, yes. Okay, now we're moving now. The move is on. I can hear the rustle in the mulberry tree. You know what I mean? And I know, that I know, I know the move is on. And I just knew it was, it was a miracle. And when I got home, by the time I got home from West Palm Beach, it was like 2.30 in the morning. 7.30, I get a call. It was still the day when we had the landlines, you know, everybody. Now everybody's got phones on them, but landline was right by my bed. The phone rings. I was a member of the congregation. He was into real estate at the time. And I didn't know this, but he pledged a million dollars towards New York, New York media. And, <coughs> excuse me, I don't really go much off of pledges. If, if we, if the ministry, I've been in ministry over 40 years now, if we'd received all the pledges that people have pledged, we would pay off the national debt of America and have money left over on the side, you know? It's just like, that's the way it is. And so, but he called me and, out of, I mean, just called me. He said, Pastor, I just want you to know, I was digging in the backyard and he said, I found a chest and there's 150,000 in it which he was teasing me. He wasn't digging in any backyard. He was just saying, I'm going to bring that by the church by midday. So now, so I'm going, okay, 505, 405, 305, 255. Yes. Now this is, this is midday Tuesday, midday Tuesday. Now I just need another 255. And I told the office and I preached that message, the ravens are coming. I said, just call me every time a raven lands. And they called me every four or five hours. Pass, another 40,000 came, another 30,000 came, and another 50,000 came. It was supernatural. I mean, by the 7th of January, Pastor Eric and myself went down to Bank of America, which they weren't happy about it. You know, banks are not happy when you withdraw money because they don't want you to take any money out. They just want you to keep the money there. Banks actually think the money belongs to them. In actual fact, it actually does. Believe it or not, when you put your money in your bank, it's not yours anymore, it's the bank's. I know, I felt the air suck out of the room right at that <laughs> juncture, but that's just the way that things are. Banks are not designed, all these financial uh, places that are designed to grow your money and you watch the commercials on television, they ain't there to grow your money, they're there to grow their money. They're there to find out how they can con you out of your life savings. And I'm sorry. Someone said, well, you don't trust any. No, I don't trust them because I know what the system set up. It's not set up for your blessing. It's set up for your failure. That's why if you trust in the system, you'll go down with the system. But if you trust in Almighty God, the Lord will make a way for you. Are you with me? You took, everybody talk about 501, uh, I mean, uh, uh, 501K or whatever, or whatever they call it. You try to draw that money out and watch what happens. 401K, you try to draw the money out of that thing. You can draw a certain amount and the rest you can't get. You can't even touch it. So what good is it to you anyway? Well, it's really for when you die. Well, then who's going to get that? Then I don't need it. When I die, I want the stuff now. I want the money now. And you can't dial 877-CASH-NOW, because that, that's another scam. Are you with me? Yeah, if, you, if your faith is in all these scams of the natural that are actually not designed for your blessing, how in the world is God going to bless you when you trust in these things, when you trust in the arm of the flesh? So Thursday, anyway, we went down to the bank, got the 800000 and we overnighted it on to Madison Square Garden, and, and, and it was on. And then the second deadline came, 30th of June. How many glad I shared this with you? Who needs to, oh, yeah. who needs to hear this today? Now, somebody said, well, were you worried? No, because when the gift of faith comes on you, there's a peace. There's a peace that comes upon you. You're not lying awake at night worrying about, I I don't know how we're going to do it. I just don't know how we're going to make it. I just need to stay up another hour and worry. 
The wife says, how are you doing? Ah, oh, I'm really praying. You're not praying, you're worrying. You're a prayer warrior. <laughs> I just don't know how I'm gonna do, I tell you. And you said to the couple, da, 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 da. oh, um, I don't know how this is gonna work. Oh God, Lord help me. If you don't come through, I'm done. Lord, if you don't come through, I'm a fall. I'm a fail. I won't be able to make people gonna laugh at me. They're gonna laugh. I don't want people laughing at me, Lord. They're laughing at you anyway. You just don't know about it. Hello. You say, what do you mean they're laughing? Because you're crazy enough to step out and walk on the water of the supernatural. Well, he thinks just because Peter walked that he can walk too. I had an uncle that tried to walk on water and he went down gloop, gloop, gloop. <laughs> and a shark got him. <laughs> Always a negative. I wouldn't do it ever. I've known people that stepped out that way in the past. But we have to realize we're in the 21st century. We're going to realize we're in the year 2020. It's a different time now. We're living in the time of Rona. <laughs> like God's word doesn't talk about the time period. So now my word will work for you, but there will come a time in the 21st century where you just have to walk away from it because it's not going to work for you. Like you can pray for the sick, lay hands on the sick, but in the time of Rona, don't touch anybody, you could die. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they'll lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. But in the time of Rona, they and the people they lay hands on will die. Does it make sense? Well, you believe the Bible? You believe that old book? You believe that old book is relevant today? I mean, you believe Psalm 91? You, you actually believe in angels? You believe that scripture that says he'll give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your way? You actually believe that? You believe that he's your source and your supply? You, you actually, be, I know they sing it in church, way maker, but you actually believe he is the way maker? You, you actually believe that? You believe he's gonna go before you? You really believe that? I mean, come on. I mean, you take the Bible literally. You, you can't do that. You can't, you can't live. Normal people, sane people don't believe in an old book that's 2,000 years old. Normal people listen to the professionals. Trust the professionals. Midget doctors. <laughs> if we don't believe the word of God, well, what are we even doing here? What are we even doing? If we do not believe God's word, beyond a shadow of a doubt, we have nothing to stand on, but we stand on sinking sand. Are you with me? Amen. Some people say, Pastor Ronnie, have you ever thought that, you know, you might have bitten off a little bit more than you could chew and that you might fail? And look, thoughts come to me just like everybody else. I've had all those thoughts, but I don't entertain them. You know, you entertain them and they bring their friends. You know, you entertain one thought for 10 minutes, a minibus will pull up with 15 other thoughts to come and be there. And they'll all get together in your head. You'll be sitting there. <laughs> and then people go, I just need a drink. I need a drink. Well, you can, you can drink new one. No, I just need a drink. Give me some Corona. (laughs) 
You sit in there drinking your Corona. You go, I knew this thing came from Mexico. Everybody knew it came. Prison said it came from China. It came from Mexico. <laughs> I mean, my prayer for every single one of you that you become so firmly established on the Word of God that you will, somebody said, you mean stake my life upon it? Yes, stake your life upon it. Yeah. Somebody said, but we could die. Then you go to heaven. Then you go to heaven. Do you know how beautiful that is? There's no, there's no one here under the sound of my voice that's going to get to heaven and go, oh, I still had a few more things I wanted to do on the earth, like a couple of places on my bucket list. <laughs> so leading up to that, um, the 30th of uh, June, when we looked, we, we had paid off about 640. We still need another 360. And I didn't know where it was come from. I just walked around the house, I was singing, we were recording that album, You're Such a Good God to Me, and I was walking around the house just singing. I didn't know what else to do, sing. Just sing. When you don't know what to do, sing. And uh, a pastor called me on the phone, he said, my wife and I have been praying, and he said, we have 300,000 in a building fund. And he said, we need like three million to build our building. And he said, nothing's moved on it in, in a couple of years. It's just like stuck. And he said, we were praying and we, we, we felt we need to release this for New York. Wow. Yeah, it's like out of the blue. And then the other 60,000, we met the second deadline of the second million. And then we needed 180,000 every single week before I got on the platform because we had to pay 19 unions. You know, we were planning to go back to Madison Square Garden uh, last year for the 20th anniversary. <laughs> if you want to see what communism has done, go to New York and try to do anything. And we were dealing with it back there 20 years ago, but you can't imagine what you have to deal with now. 19 unions, so in other words, they would, if, if we wanted to move that speaker over there, we couldn't get our ushers to move that from there to there, or even the podium. The union people had to move it, $65 an hour, back then. And he said to me, if you don't have that 180,000 every week when you arrive here on Tuesday, he said, we won't even switch the sound on which that would be embarrassing. You there, all the people are coming, and you there. <laughs> you have no sound, because he said, I won't switch the sound. I'm not going to switch the lights on. And every single week from then was a miracle. We, 250 of this church moved to New York. Like, people were on the ground. They were, they, you know, when I got to New York, I looked this off, and my band, my choir, you know, I mean, just people were on it for eight weeks. Some of them never came back. They were launched in the full-time ministry. They just said, Pastor, look, we gave up everything to be here. We're just going to go into ministry. I said, go. And many of them launched international ministries coming out of that. Are you with me? Something happens when you hook up with faith. Amen. Something takes place when you hook up with faith. Amen. So... Every week it was supernatural. Uh, at that time, we just did one service because we were getting ready, you know, Monday, I mean, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, getting ready to fly back up to go back to the garden. And I mean, when all hell come against us, that first opening day, there was a heat wave that locked down all the, 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 um, the um, subways. They couldn't run. That was the number one way for people to get to the garden because the subway system ran right under Madison Square Garden. So we opened the first night with about 3,000 people. And then they were like, Howard Brown comes to the garden, nobody's there, you know, which, which I mean, we were there for six weeks, we weren't there for one night. 
Anybody can do a one night thing. Anybody can do a one night. I felt like I was going to sing that old hymn. I come to the garden alone. <laughs> while the dew is still on the roses. Anyway. And everybody's mocking you. You know, mock, that's all I've known. Be mocked. That's all I've lived with all the years. Just be mocked. You know, if I wasn't mocked about something, I would think I was unsaved. You know what I mean? And every week was supernatural. Every week I had the money. Every week, don't ask me how. It didn't come in the offering on Sunday. Tithe and offering was what it normally was, and I didn't even try to get the money. And I'm actually not teaching this today to try to get money from you. The Lord, take care, the Lord takes care of this ministry. I'm trying to teach this to get something into your spirit so you can attach your faith to what God wants to do for you. I'm actually not even taking an offering right now. We will take one, but I'm teaching. Big difference. Big difference. And so the last week, nothing came in. I mean, it was nothing. Monday, there was nothing. I sang. I sang louder. Tuesday, there was nothing. When, when I got on the plane to fly up there, the man running our office, he said to me, how much money do you have this week? Uh, <laughs> He said, I'll just tell you, we don't need 180,000 this week. We need 300,000. How much money do you have this week? I said, nothing. He, he, he said, are you serious? I said, yes. I said, well, I'm coming. He said, what am I going to do? And you couldn't do this now because they changed the banking laws, but it came out of my spirit. It popped out. I paused for a second, which felt like 10 minutes. I paused for a second. He said, what are we going to do now? I said, write the checks. I said, write the checks. The money will be there by Friday. And he paused. He said, serious? I said, yeah, the money will be there by Friday. Well, I had never received the offering at all. I let other people do it just five minutes, whatever, and people don't know how to receive an offering. They have no faith attached to the meeting. They just get up and wah, 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 wah. There's no faith. They, their skin's not in it. You know, if we, don't come, if we don't come out of it, my head's on the chopping block, not them. Everybody wants a place to preach, but they don't want to pay the price to go and lay everything out, lay the field. Are you with me? There's a price to pay to stand in that place. So I got up that night. We turned away 5,000 people from the garden. We broke the all-time attendance record at Madison Square. 5,000 people turned away. And I took the offering. It took 20 minutes. I took 20 minutes and taught on the five loaves and two fish. And then we, after the service, normally they'll call you with the total of the offering. We didn't hear anything. One o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. 20 to four in the morning, they called me. Pastor, we just finished counting now. The offering was $240,000 that came in. Yeah. And so... I said, okay, I'll do it tomorrow night. I got up, and that night was 60,000. We paid all the bills, and the rest is history. 48,459 people were saved, and the gospel soul when the script was birthed. Everything we're doing today that has now resulted in 29 million decisions for Christ worldwide. Can you say amen? So God, God will tell you to do certain things, and it's a sign and a wonder. And, you know, so I, you know, the critics can say what they like. I said, look, you have to go rent Madison Square Garden for six weeks and go do it. And then after that, rent the Hirsch Coliseum in Shreveport, Louisiana for another six weeks. And then after that, you need to go on television. And I just start throwing out. And then you need to get a field and do 100 nights of the stand. If you're going to argue with me, go do those things. And when you finish doing those, come back and we'll talk. Because then we'll be on the same page. Until then, just zip it. Shut up your mouth because you're talking out of ignorance. I'm not talking out of ignorance. I'm talking out of what the word of the Lord says. This is not because I'm some great whatever. This is because God. Yes. And if the Lord can do it for me, he can do it for you. I know I'm talking big numbers here, but what are you believing God for? What has God spoken to your heart? What has God told you that you will do? Don't listen to friends. Don't listen to people that know you and judge you after the flesh and say you'll never make it because they are going to be on the wrong side of history. Not only will you make it, but you're going to go over the top. Let me tell you right now. Because God is with you and he's on your side and he's for you. Hallelujah. I feel like slapping somebody right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
He makes a way where there is no way. Grab a hold of this for your spirit today. Somebody said, how, how are you being sustained? The gift of faith. I pray let the same gift of faith that's on me come on every single person in this room for this week, for this week, for this month. Let the same gift of faith come upon every person watching in their homes right now. Miraculous, supernatural provision that just blows your mind. You just shake your head and say, wow, only God, only God can do these things. And the Lord shall sustain you. He shall sustain you. That's why we never received money from the government when there was money being made available. I said, if I have to approach them and get what they offer, then the word of God is of none effect. God will sustain us. God will carry us. And he will bring us through. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. 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 And we stand here today supernaturally sustained by the hand of God. And you... Every single one of you shall be supernaturally sustained by the word of the Lord. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Who needed to hear this today? How many many feel faith rising on the inside of it? Yeah, but that's just natural faith. As I'm speaking, the power of God will come on people and the gift of faith will come upon people. That's the next dimension. When the gift of faith comes on you, you'll outrun a chariot of horses. 20 miles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You'll do the impossible. God's called this room of people to do the impossible. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. That's a gift of faith coming on people. You know, we've had some visitors come. They already left the service because to them, the thing's been going two, two, two and a half hours already. Oh, hey, hey. You, could sit in a, you could sit in a hospital waiting room for two and a half hours. Or you could sit here and get the word of the Lord. See, when God's word becomes more important to you than anything else out there, then time means absolutely nothing to you. Well, you could have multiple services. I don't want multiple services. We do one service. We do one good service. One good service is better than five nonsense services. Hello. It takes longer than an hour to develop some of your people's negatives. Well, those are the old days. Remember a film when it took an hour to develop? Come on. The gift of faith. Jesus! With the gift of faith, you'll see things others can't see. You'll hear things others can't hear. You'll know things others don't know. You, you, somebody said, what do you tell me? You'll have inside information. So when everybody says it's finished, you go, absolutely not. Absolutely. God's not finished yet. Say, so how do you know? I have inside information. Amen. Well, let's pray. Ask God what he'd have you do today. And we'll receive the morning tithes and offerings, do what he tells you. Those that are watching on all the streams and television, you can be a part together with us. Father, bless the gift and the gift and the giver. Multiply the seed sown here. Cause this next week to be a supernatural week of increase, multiplication on every side as they take a step of faith and sow a seed today and bring the tithe and the offering. I pray that you multiply it and cause Monday to be a day of increase and Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday and Friday and Saturday that by next Sunday we'll have many more testimonies 
the people here believe in you for a house, that property will come into their hands supernaturally. The people that need transportation, vehicles will come into their hands. People that need jobs, they need income streams, that you will give them income stream. Father, is supernatural, not something that's just gonna barely make, make it, something that causes them to excel and go over the top. And I thank you for that now. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Thank you for watching today on YouTube. Please press the subscribe button and also the notification button and like and get the word out so others can watch.